Hello there, welcome back to Crafters TV. Oh, we've been having the Christmas tunes playing between songs. We've been dancing around the festivities of well and truly set in, haven't they? And to celebrate that, we thought we'd give you double points all weekend for 48 hours. I know, how generous is that? And don't forget, of course, about the winter sale, which has started over on the website, meaning up to 70% off of some lines which is incredible the next two hours though is all about the craft along and she is here, here with me my little my very own little elf naughty elf we need to pop her on a shelf how are you doing debbie you see i've gone all festive because it's my last show with you joe uh before because we're not going to see each other now i'm back again before the last day but i thought get me a little festive jumper out stick my little festive headwear on and get ready for a craft along, bum bum bum. We're gonna go in Amazing. with a lovely, big, beautiful gift box with the beautiful trifold apertures. Absolutely gorgeous. I've gone with the little, um, the little. You make my heart, or you have my heart, should I say? Because you certainly do, Joe. Um, and that one is what we're going to be using the gorgeous trifold apertures in a slightly different way. If you've joined us on the show this morning, um, I did it as it was intended, how it was designed. Um, I wanted to just mix it up a little bit and take you on to a different journey using these. Uh, these beautiful dies because they are gorgeous die sets and stamp sets that are absolutely beautiful and it will work with any of your designs so if you've got only one of them you could use that on this if you've got all of them just take your pick just make it work for you but joe's going to give you all of the items that you need as well and a little bit more extra detail too absolutely it's not too late if you want to get involved let's share with you the things that you're going to require for this upcoming craft along trifold window stamp and die collection is what we're looking at of course uh, debbie has used the you have my heart you could use any of them in the range uh, you need some cardstock there as you can see include your white stamping card nina cardstock some autumn blessings 12 by 12 again you could mix it up if you wanted to uh, ribbons a selection of tri blend markers there too uh, then of course some other elements from your stash you've got a gemini guillotine scoreboard uh, scissors low tack tape uh, your tape pens, some adhesive, some foam pads, and a couple of ink pads there as well. You've got a few more minutes to uh, gather those items uh, together, and then we'll get started very, very shortly. But we are not alone, not just me and you, Debbie. Oh, no. Uh, the lovely Sean is joining us as well. Hi, Sean. How's it going? I'm good. You OK? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Oh, I, is that a little Christmas tree I spy in the background there? Yeah, it's a little one. <laughs> oh, I love how you've made your little craft space uh, lovely and festive. Where are you joining us from this afternoon? Um, so, the UK. I live in Surrey, near Gatwick Airport. Oh, nice. So yeah. I used to live uh, in a place called East Grinstead, which is, is kind of close to there, I think. Yes. Yeah. I went to primary school there, Debbie. It Did was fabulous. Really? Uh, Sean, have you got all your bits and bobs <coughs> gathered and ready to go for this craft along? Yeah, I've got them all ready. Amazing. Right, you seem set to go. What we'll do is we'll drop back in on you as we go through the show. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Cool, thank you. Brilliant. Right. Uh, now, uh, of course, in the usual way, uh, if you don't yet have this particular collection of Dyson stamps, don't worry. Fear not. It's not too late because you can watch this show back anytime you like. You can grab a hold of these today. This show will always be available for you to view at any time. And they are a beautiful uh, set of stamps and dies. I'm going to show you some of the concepts quickly uh, that you can create with these, which are fabulous uh, because there's loads of different things you can do with them. Of course, you can do your craft along with them. You can do them uh, or use them in the way in which they're intended, which is in this kind of uh, trifold style. But there's loads and loads of different things that have been created with these. So um, lots of versatility on i love this one this little dl uh trifold that's been done just there the little fold back card that's super super cute think about maybe using a couple of them as well you can see here i've actually used them uh two sets together on sort of a um a gate fold back card this one here is beautiful i love this a little card within a card which i think is very very clever uh what else have i got here i've also got this one which i love and this is like a three sort of a three layer card, which is cute, love that one. Uh, and then I'll just show you this one as well. Talking about, um, Debbie looked at this one earlier, you could do these almost like a star, uh, like a star book. So these have been three different layers that have then been joined together there to give you a really different look and feel. We've got six different um, designs in here. So you've got the bunnies, uh, you've got you mean so much, you have my heart, you've been on my mind, Peaky and Salo, 
best buddies as well. And you will get that ultra smooth cast stock in the six by 12 style size, which is the perfect size to create uh, these amazing projects. Uh, loads of you chatting away already and saying hi. If you want to get in touch, you can do so in all the usual ways. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion, if you are across on YouTube. But as always with the Craft Along, uh, we'll take regular breaks as well. So if you do start to fall behind a tad, don't worry, you get an opportunity to catch up. Um, Debbie will recap the steps as we go through. But if there are any things uh, that you miss or you need recapping, then you can let me know. You can get in touch with me, uh, as I just said there. Right, Debbie, I think, you know, if you're ready, it seems everyone else is pretty much good to go. Absolutely. I'm ready, ready and raring to go. So grab your white stamping card. This is what's going to make your box um, outer layer, lid, inner layers. So we need the white stamping card. Large guillotine and your large scoreboard, but you can easily work this uh, with the smaller ones as well. And I would just use your glass mat for your measurements. But what we're going to do, first of all, is we are going to extend our arm. Oh, Actually, lovely. I've been told it's an arm, not a leg. What, what makes it an arm and not a leg? Yeah, well, I, I call it know. a leg because it comes out, but uh, apparently, according to Ben, the world of Ben. No, I so think it's a leg. It's a, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Jamie doesn't know what he's on about when you see him next time. <laughs> <laughs> right, so what we're going to do is extend and then we're going to cut this cardstock down to 10 inches. Now you need two pieces of this. So two pieces of your white stamping card. We're going to pop it on before we do any scoring. We're going to pop it onto our guillotine and we're going to lift up the um, arm of the guillotine and we're going to measure this at 10 and a half inches. So you're going along at the top. Make sure this cardstock is pushed up to the top right to the very top take it up to the ten and a half inches make sure it's on that line and cut straight down so this is now a4 but chopped to on the on the landscape weight at ten and a half inches and then we're going to do exactly the same with the second one we're going to pop this one on we're going to go to that ten and a half inches again we're going to make sure that the card is flush up to the top of the guillotine and on that line it makes a massive difference if you get that little bit wrong hold it down with your finger guard and cut so you've got two pieces that are going to form the box base around the box base however we do need a couple of other things as well uh, so while you've got your white stamping card i want you to take another piece and we're going to cut this down and we're going to do two pieces of this for our strong sturdy bottom of your box we're going to have five inches by five inches Fabulous. so up to the five inch mark hold it down turn that and exactly the same and then repeat that process five inches by five inches so what you've got now is two pieces at five inches by five inches this is going to be what sits on the bottom of your card box or your box card sorry and that's what's going to stick on the inside to give it a nice super strength uh, because you don't want um, a weak uh, base for you don't. your box. You don't want a soggy bottom. Exactly. A saggy bottom even. Exactly. And you will have got your two pieces that are basically your A4 but just cut to ten and a half inches. So two pieces that cut on the landscape way of your A4 cardstock at ten and a half inches. And then there's one more piece we need to cut but I'm going to show you how to use this to create your box lid by just bringing in and switching over for a second. I've had to think about it Debbie as well as why it's definitely a leg and not an arm. Why because the arm is the bit that you cut with, so therefore the bit that pops out has to be the leg. Because you can't have an arm and a leg, you can't have two legs in different directions. Thank you very much, there Joe. You are. There we go, Thank absolutely. You. Now, on your scoreboard, I need to add for my lids, I need it to be seven and an eighth of a square to okay. fit on the dimensions of the box. Because we're, we're, not, we're making a box that's not a normal standard box that you would use your scoreboard with. So your box lid, your box base. So it's not the normal. So what you're doing is you're having to work out that extra little bit of your uh, box lid when you're fitting it onto the top. So the dimensions of this is seven and eighth. Now it's very difficult on a guillotine to find the seventh and an eighth. So I always use my scoreboard. So I've got my cardstock and it's the white stamping card again. And I'm going to make this really easy for myself. I'm going to go up to the seven but go on one increment, which is one eighth, so seven and one eighth, and I'm gonna score all the way down, top to bottom. And then I'm just gonna repeat that again on the other side. So popping this down, go to seven and one eighth, and score that all the way down. And I'm gonna go to that first line because that's the bit that I'm gonna cut. And that gives me a perfect seventh and an eighth 
of uh, a square top it's going tip, to Debbie, form top tip. the lid and it really is a good top tip and all i'm going to do joe is then measure it up against on my uh, guillotine now your score line should fit perfectly where the end can you see where the end i'll just pop it there for uh, let me do it that way so it, oh wait a minute angle of the camera there we go that perfect so you'll need your cut your cardstock to be on the edge of this silver blade because that's the blade and the blade that make the contact so you want that to get that perfect seventh and eighth you're going to go on you're going to take the score line and it's going to sit perfectly onto that line and then you're going to trim that down and that gives you your perfect measurements i'm just going to go in though joe because i've realized i've just got a tad wonky because guess what i didn't do I didn't push the cardstock up to the top. I did say that little bit was very important when it comes to, there we go, that's better. And then the same the other way around, make sure that cardstock's up to the top, take it onto that line and cut. And now you've got the perfect lid. I'll just put that there for a second, which is your seventh and an eighth. So you've got all the bases there for your box. This is gonna form the box. This is going to be the lid. And these two pieces are going to be the strong bottom. So that is all the cutting that you need in your white stamping card for the time being. Okay, doke. Because we are going to do some inside panels, but I think we'll do that in a moment, because what we're going to do is we're going to just score this box and get this bit st started. So I'll just give you a second to catch up and get all those die cut elements. Uh, Brilliant. Sorry, those bits cut. Excellent. I'll tell you what then, whilst you're doing that, I'll share with you quickly uh, the paper pad collection we've got on the show. It's a buy two, you got one free, which is very, very awesome. Uh, so three of our most popular pattern paper pads in here. You're going to get the garden party selection, which is a, a timeless uh, selection of papers. Lots of florals, really lovely uh, uplifting pastel colours all the way through there, which is excellent. You're also going to get the Be Beautiful, one of my all-time favourite paper pads double-sided, really lovely, warm, rich um, yellow and chocolate uh, and brown colours in there, all on that B theme, uh, which is so, so popular at the moment. Some uh, panels on there as well, which make instant card toppers for you. And then you'll also get this one, which is your farmhouse collection. And again, really beautiful, uh, quite bold in its colour palette, this one. Lots of florals, lots of repeating patterns in there for you as well. A really, really lovely card pad 2598 39.90 let's just quickly drop in on sean because i didn't realize apparently sean and i we've got matching jumpers on sean yeah we do i have oh. a female version though look at that you've got <laughs> yeah. the other version on i think is that the same one that debbie fisher's got oh i don't know <laughs> oh i think she might do as well is yours from was it from was it from tesco um, no, it was from New Look, if I'm allowed. Oh, yours is way fancier <laughs> than mine, Shark. Mine's from Tesco. Not there's anything wrong with Tesco, obviously, but just New Look's a little bit fancier. Uh, how did you get on with that first section? Are you following so far? Yeah, I'm, I'm following so far. Brilliant. Right, I'm excited to see what you come up with. I'm going to check in with you very, very soon. Uh, I feel like we need to name our reindeers, don't you, Sean and I's reindeers? I feel like mine would be a boy and Sean's would be a girl. Uh, so let us know in the comments, Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafts Companion on YouTube. Also, we need to name Debbie's Dalmatian as well. Is it a Dalmatian? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, a very sparkly Dalmatian. Of course. What do you expect from what? I've That's... got to have a bit of sparkle. So yeah, I've got some sparkly bits there. <laughs> sparkly <laughs> bits, sparkly hats. Sparkly snowflakes, of course. Yeah, you are you are a very own little sparkly snowflake here at Crafters TV, Debbie. You really, really are. Right, we need names then for my reindeer, Sean's reindeer, and also Debbie's Dalmatian. Uh, let me just quickly take you back through the different designs that you're going to, going to receive uh, in this trifold aperture collection. So these are your birthday bunnies that are in here. Love that you get the different stamps and sentiments for each one of the collections as well. You've then got this one here, which is you mean so much for that beautiful, cute little elephant on there. These are the owls. This is the one that Debbie is using with the You Have My Heart. You will also receive the Schmetterlings as well. Uh, you've been on my mind uh, as, as well as uh, peeking in to say hello and also Best Buddy. He looks a bit like your, the dog on your jumper, doesn't he, Best Buddy? <laughs> really the same little Dalmatian. Whenever, when I was a kid, Debbie, I desperately wanted us to get a Dalmatian. Aww. I don't know why. It was the one dog that I really, really wanted. We didn't. We had a Rhodesian Ridge back instead. Anyway, Aww. 41 5438 uh, if you want to get your hands on these as a platinum member. Loads of you tuning in saying hello. No questions yet, though, or no one needs anything recapping at the moment, Debbie. So I think everyone seems to be 
keeping up tickety boo good well what we're going to do is we're just going to make the basis for the box we'll do all the inside panels in a moment and we'll do all the pattern cutting in a moment as well so first things first you're going to take it in two now we're going to go in the um portrait mode this time and you're going to push this up to the uh left hand side of your scoreboard and we're going to score this at one and a half inches from the top to the bottom on this angle so go on to your one and a half inch and then score and I always do a couple of gentle score lines breaking those fibers taking care not to rip them but that's your one and a half you're then going to turn it and I'll just make sure I've got this the right way because I am absolutely shocking when it comes to this that way <laughs> and we're going to score this at five inches ten inches and that is all the scoring that you need to do to create your box panels and you'll see in a moment with the five inch and the ten inch and it leaves you with a little half hinge flap just here. Fabulous. So that creates that panel like so. And you're going to repeat those score lines onto the next panel. So we're going to go in again. We're going to push that up into the portrait mode. We're going to go down to the one and a half. I'm going to score from the top to the bottom. One and a half inches. A couple of gentle scores. We're going to turn that again. And we're going to do exactly the same. Where we're scoring at five inches and ten inches and then I want you to get your scoring tool and then you can do all the burnishing so literally take the flat edge and then you're going to burnish that like so and that burnishes those lines for you but beautifully so again burnish all of your score lines and again, I'm just going to use that end to create that. That's the bit that sits in the groove. The rounded ball sits in the groove. That's the bit that does all your, your burnishing for you, the flat end. And you'll repeat that on the second piece. So we're going to go in again with the second piece. We're going to fold. We're going to burnish. And that's all of those score lines. You want some nice, crisp burnish lines because this is actually the box base i say the box base sorry the box surrounds that's the best way to describe it and you can see that in a moment how you'll be putting that together because that's going to create your box oh, nice um but we need to like do a little bit of cutting out and i'll explain what i mean by that what we need to do is create um some little notches i always cut my little notches to make things nice and neat uh, when i'm doing this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut up and cut across like so so grab your scissors large scissors small scissors whatever scissors you feel comfortable with you're going to use that score line and we're going to cut up to the top of that line and then i'm going to go in just at an angle at that second score line like so and it gives me a really nice finish when you're turning it over so that's that's the angle that you want it at you're going to keep the uh, to, uh to the top one as well you're going to do exactly the same way you're going to give it a little neat finish so just take a slither off at the top like so and then here just so when you're folding it over you're not getting any um any bits what's the right word i'm going to use with this one any bits um <coughs> uh, uh i'm trying to think of a clean word for this i know i'm trying to just bear with me i'm so that sorry would help. Uh, that would help. Right, right so so when they cross over you haven't got anything um showing there like so so that would be how you do that bit and that is all you need to do for that and repeat exactly the same on this side as well joe so exactly the same we've just done and i'll just move that away so you can see take it up to the first line and it just gives it a nice neat finish and it makes such a difference when you're doing your boxes again remember the top bit just a little slither off the top and then again just here up to the top and that little slither off. It's similar to what you do when you are making a box. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's just it's a good. It's nice to see these bigger boxes made, obviously, Debbie, because yeah. it's obviously be quite difficult, wouldn't it, to make a box this size in the regular style that we do it. So exactly. Really yeah. nice to see your options. So you've got two of your box panels now. That's going to create that. Like I said, it's going to sit literally like so. That's how it's going to fold and create that box. But we're going to move those to one side for, it, for just a second because you're going to bring in your um, your larger piece of the squares. Do you know how you've got these three pieces it's this one that's going to be your box um, lid so bringing back in your scoreboard and again when you think about this and this is what always sometimes confuses people is 
We're ignoring the scoreboard with the box lid and the box space because we've actually made a box. So we're just using this for scoring purposes now. So you're going to pop it up to that left hand side and we're going to score at uh, an inch all the way around on all four sides, making sure and taking care that your uh, cardstock is at the butt of your board, like so. Like so. And then same again, burnish, nice burnish lines. Again, turning your tool over and using your burnisher. And that's on all four sides again. Debbie, should we tell everyone about my, um, my uh, friends? This is reminding me of the video that I sent you the other week when I was, I was out. I went to see a friend. A friend of mine's been watching a lot of Crafters TV, I think, Debbie. Uh, and you are their absolute favourite, <laughs> my friend Matt. And uh, he was like, oh, I just love that woman. I love that woman, <laughs> Debbie. She's like, you do a fold and a fold, and you've got a basket. <laughs> <laughs> and that was his impression. It was quite out scarily accurate, wasn't it, Debbie? Oh, God, love him. He did. He actually sounded like he came from I Yorkshire. Think he's got, he's got, he's, you, I think you've got a top fan there, Debbie. Oh, I've never had a top fan before. That's you like you. Fold, and a fold, and you've got a basket. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see with the box lid, all you do is exactly the same. You take your scissors up to that first score line and then just cut a little slither off. It makes for a nice neat fold when you're tucking it in. Uh, and then that's how you get that lovely neat crisp finish. Just by having that little slither off, it makes such a difference. So that's your box lid covered. You've got your two box bases made. I hope he's not watching today. I think I'm on here. I'm making boxes and <laughs> bless him uh, but we'll talk about the panels in a moment because we need some more stamping card we're going to make some more panels because the two panels go that go inside the box we need to create for the aperture so if I just give you a little sneaky peek we've got two more panels to make to pop into our box can you see them so we're going to give you the measurements for those just in a second amazing right should we give you a second then Debbie yep. uh, before we move on to the next so, uh, give move on to the next step I uh, will also give you a section to catch up I think I need to catch up by the sounds of it uh, let me just show you a couple of other bits that are on the show which I think you would love uh, we've got a great adhesive bundle for you uh, which is on the show as well uh, this one here is your Crafts Companion adhesive selection you get loads in here so you get the 3, the 6, the 12 mil liner tape you get the low tack tape uh, the tacky glue, the all-purpose glue, the 3D glue gel with the tools oh yeah uh, and also the fine glue tip fine tip Fine tip glue applicator as well. Debbie, if this is what it's like today, it's day one. What I'm going to be like? I think we've all got that festive feeling, you know. All I can think about is, you know, mince pies and mistletoe. Uh, we've also got a foam selection for you uh, here as well. Now, within this one, you are going to receive, right, the foam on a roll. Foam on a roll. Foam on a roll. Foam on a roll. Foam on a roll, foam on a roll, foam on a roll. Hey, you also get the foam pads uh, in four different sizes as well, which is amazing. So make sure you take uh, advantage of that. 786 or 2018 if you are across the pond. We are going to take a very, very quick pause. i uh, give you an opportunity to check uh, your, to get yourself caught up, uh, is what I should say. Why should you do that? Here's all the details of Club Inspire. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafter's companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook, where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today.
We've had to make some changes to our shipping charges and we want to keep you informed. With continued pressure on domestic shipments around mainland US, we've had to temporarily increase the cost of our regular 6 to 10 working day standard shipping service from $9.99 to $12.95 and our free shipping threshold from $100 to $125. We also have some really great news to tell you. We've introduced a brand new shipping service called Express Delivery. This is a fully tracked door-to-door -door service which takes three to seven working days and costs $19.95. This option means you'll get your crafty goodies in your hands sooner, meaning less waiting and more crafting. We're also upgrading delivery services for our gold and platinum Club Inspire members who will now receive priority delivery on all of their orders. And if that wasn't enough, we've upgraded these orders to our new Express 3-7 to seven day service. Your patience and understanding throughout this very busy time has been amazing. So we'd just like to say a huge thank you and we look forward to chatting to you again very soon. Oh, excellent. Everyone getting, <laughs> everyone getting the opportunity to get themselves caught up there, uh, which is fabulous. Loads of you tuning in. So I haven't done any hellos yet, have I? How rude of me. Uh, let me do some hellos in that case. Uh, Georgianne is here. Uh, who else is here? <laughs> Claudia's in as well. Uh, Sarah Brown says, I need my sleep. Been a bit busy with the silly season festivities. Forgive me for not commenting. Uh, I'll have fallen asleep. Well, that's right. You, you need to, we all need to get up. You sleep. Linda's in Maryland. Uh, Adriana saying hi from San Antonio, Texas. Jean's in Mississippi as well. Um, Carol's really looking forward to the craft along. Thea saying how beautiful the project is. Uh, and Deborah saying both of us look so festive. Lots of name suggestions coming in. We need more though, please. What are we going to call this guy? What are we going to call Debbie's? Uh, cat, um, I was going to say critter then. It's not a critter, is it? It's a, it's a Dalmatian. What are we going to call Debbie's Dalmatian? Uh, and what are some of the names in 101 oh, Dalmatians? Do you know it's one of Natasha's favourites? I is can't it? remember. And we also need a name for Sean's uh, reindeer as yes. well. So get the names coming in, please. Let us know. Uh, right, Debbie, I think everyone's just about caught up if you're good to go. Yes, so I said we cut the two inside panels. So you need to bring back your guillotine. So I'll go with the large guillotine again, bring in some more stamping cards and what we're going to do for this one is we're going to cut ourselves two panels that are going to sit inside the box and these measure at six by six and a half. So I'm going to go in with a six, there we go, by six and a half, let's take that in, there we go, six, oops wait a minute that's not six and a half Debbie, what's wrong with your eyes, six and a half. And again, exactly the same. I wonder if I've got enough out. Ooh, ooh, just fell short. Ooh, Tracy, Tracy, Tracy. We're running low on stamping cards. Tracy. Tracy. So I've got one more piece. Woo! That, that'll it. be it. That'll be it. So I need She's some more stamping cards. Oh, bless her little art. Actually, Debbie's just needing to. Well, I did say six. I think I might need more than one piece because guess what I've done? My eyes are getting really bad. <laughs> I've gone, 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 gone wrong. So six by six and a half. I told you the right measurements. I just have get, I've cut it wrong myself. So let me just make sure that that's right again. Six by six and a half. Perfect. Let me just put that there for a second. Thank you, Miss Tracy. Thank you very much. Nice big wad of stamping card just being delivered. And then exactly the same. Where we're going to go. Six and a half by six. And it's two or three of those we need, Debbie. Two of those. Two of those, actually. Two of those. And this is what's going to create the aperture look inside your box. So this is going to create the aperture part. So when I just pop them there for a second, I'm just going to move my guillotine for a minute, Joe. Just give me a second. Let me move the cardstock out of the way because I've got about 100 pieces there now and I don't want to confuse myself. So I'm going to make sure I've got all my bits together. There we go. That should be right. Push those to one side. Then I can't get confused. And then what we're going to do is on the long edge, so the six and a half inch edge, and I'm just going to make sure I've got that right, we're going to score down at half an inch this side and half an inch that side. And when you think about your box panels and where it will fit, it'll just fit in really nice and neatly. It won't interfere with your box top so it's good because it's not going right to the very top of your box um, but it's just the right nice size but it'll still create that lovely aperture feel inside however we need to put the score lines in so let's bring that back in again and 
I just need to ju double double check this one, Joe, because I've just said it myself. Okay, didn't I? I? Long edge, six and a half. Let me just make sure I've got that bit right because I don't want to be giving the wrong measurement out. So that way, that way, that way, that's it. So take it on to where your six inch mark is. Whoops, just put that down there for a second. And score in a half an inch. And you could go at the five and a half inch in, or you can just turn it back round and do it that way. So just grab your paddles. Uh, again, half an inch in. And then at your five and a half inch. Make sure your board's on straight, your paper's on straight. And then repeat that one on the second panel as well. So go in with the second panel, half an inch. And five and a half inch. And again, for this bit, you just need to make sure uh, you've burnished again. So take your scoring tool, flip reverse it, and burnish. So fold and burnish. Fold into that score line and burnish. And the same with this side, exactly the same. Folding them in and burnishing. You know, you could have crafted a long jaw. I think you'd have enjoyed this. Yeah, I was. Um, I was a yeah. bit. No, I was, I was just. Yeah. Uh, no, I was just. <laughs> I'm like a yeah. donkey. <laughs> um, it just does. I, I thought it was going to be a bit ambitious for me, Debbie. Did you really? Yeah. Oh no, not at all. Not at all. You know, like to make craft alongs achievable for, uh, for people. Uh, now, what you will have got. This is all your box done. It's just the next bits are going to be the um, paper, and you're going to choose your paper. But what you should have got now are your two. Um, pieces that are scored to create your box itself you should have a box lid scored and cut that's your seven seven and one eighth by seven and one eighth you should have two pieces of five by five because that's the dimensions of this box I should have said that to start with shouldn't I, I should have made it easier this dimension of the box is five by five and then you'll also have your two inner side panels now that even when the flaps are tucked in they measure at five inches. What about when the flaps are not tucked in? What does it measure at? Six. Perfect. That's your six and a half for the length. The six is the dimensions and the two half when they fold in are the five inch, which is what that box is. It's a five inch dimension. Oh, Fabulous. That makes sense. Yeah. So you've got those two pieces and they're going to create the aperture and one of these panels will be the outside aperture. So we need to cut down the patterned cardstock. So get your patterned cardstock of choice because I'm going to give you the measurements that you need for all, all the little pieces uh, before we move on to the uh, trifold part. Amazing. Uh, right, let me just share with you. We've got lots of um, ideas coming in for names. Um, oh, lots of, everyone's very chatty today in the comments. Um, who we got here? Pam says, uh, wow, well, here again. I've been away for three weeks. Pam, we have missed you. I need to send out a search party at one point. She says, normally I'm up in the attic, which is half done, but I'm sat watching them making the last 20 baubles for my classes this week. So hello, CCTV. Hello to you. Uh, Hadassah says, Debbie's donation should be called Sparkly Bits. <laughs> like that. Can you imagine being in the park, though? <laughs> Sparkly Bits, come on. I love that. Um, Yours should be called Purdy, and mine should be called Rudy. I like ah. that, Purdy and Rudy. Um, uh, Julie says, hello, one and all from Northern Illinois. I hope you're all enjoying your Saturday so far. Just got 9 a.m. here, looking forward to a Crafters Companion card-making weekend. Ooh. Love that. Uh, Julie says, I love the uh, my trifold aperture dies. I only have the elephant, the butterfly, and the bunny, but the other three are on their way. Yay. Uh, who else we've got here as well? Uh, pay, uh, Pat uh, says, I've been wondering how to make a box like this, so thanks for the instructions. Uh, Laurie says, Joe's reindeer could be called JC, short for Joe Cool. I like that. I was trying to think if that was a famous person's <laughs> name then, but I was thinking of Joe Exotic, which is a whole different thing. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> she just goes, yeah, no. <laughs> Uh, Debbie, your top fan is here. Adriana's letting me know. So you've got no, you've got lots Aww. of top fans. Uh, Joe's row thing says Joe's dear is festive Felix. Sean's is shiny Charlotte, and Debbie's is dashing Danny. 
Love oh, that. Oh, like uh, that. The lovely Lynn is saying hello. Joyce, Joe, Diamond, Debbie, the CTV team, the social superstar, and everyone else. Hello, lovely Lynn. Uh, Joyce suggests how about Glitz and Glam? Oh, that could be the name yeah, for our animals. Like that. Or Jingle and Jangle. Oh, yeah, like that. How about Mr. Cool for Joe's reindeer? Have to think more for Debbie's dog. And Joyce says maybe Glimmer and Glitter. I love that idea. Um, just to clarify, Debbie, just on card sizing, yeah. UK A4 is 8.25 wide. Is that right? UK. Yes, I think it is. The width A4. is 8.25 and the US is 8.5. So that, say that again, 8.25. 8 8.25. Yeah, just a fraction, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So it's just, a, it's just a quarter of an inch narrower than US letter. Yeah. There we go. Right, Debbie, if you're ready to go, I think everyone else is uh, keeping up. Uh, yes, no problem. So choose your paper. I've gone for, um, well, I love the Autumn Blessings paper pad. Um, so that's the one that I've gone for. But we've got some amazing paper pads and this is going to work. I suppose it depends on the design. I've gone for the owls and that's why I thought Autumn owls. That's nice. why I went along the Autumn themes. So just adapt it to fit the theme of whatever it is that you're using for your trifold. Um, so I've gone with uh, the um, Autumn Lessons gorgeous paper, it really is. And it's double-sided and it's always one of those tricky ones, Joe. Good grief, what do you use? Because honestly, these are beautiful. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut ourselves, first of all, four panels for the sides of the boxes. So we're going to cut four pieces at, that measure six and a half inches by four and three quarter inches. So if I bring this in, and I'm going to go with the four and three quarter option first, get a little bit more out of my cardstock or papers. So we're going to go in at four and three quarters by, and I think I said six and a half, didn't I? Let me just get me just to double check because this is the bit that I forgot to write down on me uh, on my piece what did I do with my ruler put my ruler back in I must put my ruler back in John I didn't realize Ooh. I'd done that what a silly billy uh yeah six and a half inches so six and a half inches and you're going to cut that four times now obviously with your cardstock especially 12 by 12 you probably wouldn't be able to do it all in one go so just just keep your spare bitch they're always coming handy for something else and personally myself i'm going to go in with two of one piece and then two of a contrasting piece just to mix it up a little bit so that's why i've chosen these papers so i'm going to go in again and i'm going to cut that to four and three quarters and then again i'm going to just take off to six and a half like so so I've got two pieces that are going to sit on one end of my box and the other end of my box. God, aren't they just delicious, these papers? Really gorgeous. Really, 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 really beautiful papers. And then I'm going to repeat those measurements again. So I'm going to have two pieces of a different contrasting car, uh, paper, sorry, at four and three quarters by the six and a half. Like so. I'll do exactly the same with the other one. Four and three quarters by six and a half. So that's my four pieces cut. Now, one of these pieces we're going to actually cut into as well. We're going to cut through with a card base box and also one of the uh, one of the chosen papers. But that's your four pieces that go around the outside of your box. We need one for the lid. Now the lid just measures Shire five by five. So I wonder if we can use a piece from the waist. Let's have a look. Not that one. Maybe I might have to go into another piece there. Yeah, I think we'll have to go into another piece. So I'll choose a different paper. Ooh, this is nice. Oh, that might have to be. Oh, I think I might have that going around the outside of my box lid. Uh, but I'm gonna have the spotted design. In fact, I might have some of this floral actually. So I'm gonna cut this to five by five. And that's going to sit on the box like so and that's going to fit onto the top of my box lid like there okay and then we're going to measure these pieces as well now they'll if you think about your box lid with the measurements that i gave you um it's just slightly and i've just used my ruler to show you let me just move those bits to one side joe because i know what i end up doing 
So if I just show you, they're just shy of an inch. So the, the actual measurement of the box lid is an inch. So what you've got to do for this is just to determine the size that you want for um, the inner panel. We know that going across, we're talking um, just shy of five again. So we're going to go in with a five inch one. So I'm going to turn it that way. I'm going to pop that in. So I'm going to cut that to five. And then I'm just going to go a fraction less than a, an inch. So when you look at your scoreboard, uh, sorry, your, your guillotine, I'm just going slightly under to create the panel that will fit around the lid. And you can always try this. Before you actually stick anything down, you can try this and see if you think, oh, I just need to cut a little slither off or it fits perfectly. It's up to you. Um, I think I'm going to cut a little extra slither off that one. So I'm going to go in a little bit, little bit off there. That's better, quite like that one. So again, you want four pieces of this. So I know I've already got this piece cut to five, so I don't have to do that again. I can just repeat this four times and this will create the panels for going around my box lid. So we'll go on again. And then that one, and that'll be the last one. So I've got four pieces that will sit around the base um, of my lid. So that's going to sit there. So you should have got right now four pieces that measure four and three quarters by six and a half, a piece that measures five by five for the box lid, and then just these which are five by just shy of an inch. And that's, that covers the outer part of your box, the box lid, and the box sides as well. Then we also need... The inside, you know, the ones that are going on the inside, we need two pieces of this as well. And again, if you think about this, we know the dimension's five, and we know we've gone slightly shy of the box, so we're not actually at the same size, but this is six, measures at six and a half. So when you're doing about your, your pieces, we're going to go to six and a quarter by four and three quarters. So we've just taken it down a little extra notch for that one. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to measure that at four and three quarters like so and then six and a quarter and that's when you might have to go into another piece to create although I think I'm going to try because it's the inside it's not really going to matter too much and I don't want to go into another piece of cardstock so I'm actually going to cut this to six inches but it's going to be on the inside and you're really not going to notice too much of a I difference. Can, I... You know, can you see there? I wouldn't worry too much. The right at the very bottom, no one's going to notice that. So we can lift that up. And that means I've not had to chop into another piece of cardstock or another piece of paper. Well, not one, not... Exactly. So those three sheets that I've used, I've actually got everything that I need for my box. Um, so that's the best way I can give you a little, another little top tip there. But that's all your um, pieces cut for your box lid your box base around the sides and the insides as well joe so we'll give everyone a couple of minutes just to get caught up on those pieces let's indeed Shouldn't take you too long well i've got some breaking news for you two of the paper pads we just showed you oh sorry nearly smashed my ipad there uh two of the paper pads i just shared with you uh, in that three for two we actually found a couple of them in the winter sale oh. at an even better deal oh really so i'm gonna say to you don't get the last one Get these ones because the farmhouse, which is this one here, 60%, 60% off of this as part of the winter sale on its own. £4.15, $5.11 uh, if you want to get it on its own. So grab that one. And we've also found the garden party on its own, 50% off, half off. And of course, you can use your club inspired discounts uh, even with our amazing winter sale discounts as well. So get those two individually, get them like that. I'm going to say, don't get the other one, actually getting better value uh, when you get it in that configuration. So why not grab that? Don't forget though, of course, we are talking about uh, the Trifold Aperture Stamp and Die Collection uh, in this show. Six awesome designs in here for you. Uh, you've got that wonderful birthday bunny in here. Remember you're getting the dies to cut the aperture, you've got sentiments, embellishing elements and the little characters themselves in there too. You've got the birthday bunny, You've also got the elephant in here, which is you mean so much. You have my, you have my heart, which is a gorgeous little owl, which is the one that Debbie's using. You've been on my mind, which are the gorgeous butterflies. You've got then this one here, which is the pussycat, peeking in to say hello. 
and of course you've got the doggies which is best buddy there as well 52.44 or 67.98 is your price and of course you're going to be able to use your club inspired discount on top of there as well which is excellent so do grab a hold of those and remember you can watch this back absolutely any time that you uh, that you want to should we see how Sean's getting on Oh, let's drop in then and see how she's going. You know, a very festive setup over there. Uh, Sean, how are you getting on? Very good. I've got all my different bits cut out. Ooh, what papers? <laughs> Ooh, I love the papers. Which paper pad is it? Um, it is the Autumn Blessings. Oh, it is the Autumn Blessings. <laughs> There's so many different designs in there, isn't there? Uh, are you following along okay so far? Yes. Ah, oh, fabulous. Right, Debbie, you're Are clearly ready? nailing it, obviously. Uh, we'll come back to you really soon, Sean. Uh, I think everyone's <laughs> ready for the next step, if you are, Debbie. Right, so the two inner panels, I want you to pop to one side. We're not going to do this technique onto these because we don't need to because they're inside. But bringing back in your paper, we're going to we're going to do a little bit of distressing around the edges with some ink to give it a little bit of dimension. And you'll have seen a few of us doing this uh, of late because it's something that we like to do. But instead of doing any matting and layering, I've taken um, our water reactive ink pad, perfect for blending and distressing. And I'm just going to touch up the edges. Now, a couple of ways you can do this. You can take your ink dabber or dauber and you can just touch around the edges with your ink dauber so literally you catch it and you hold it and hold it at an angle your paper and then just run your ink dabber dauber what do they call them joe because honestly your blending tool i call them blending tools ink applicators daubers daubers dabbers, dabbers. dibbers daubers exactly we've all got different way we <laughs> different ways of using it but can you see that little edge just gives it that little frame without having to add any matting and layering but it makes your paper pop a little bit so we're going to do that on all of our pieces including the box lid as well um, it's just a nice little feature and sometimes I forget about these little I call them the finishing touches you know sometimes we're in such a rush to get demos done for you that we forget about these um, so it's nice to go to them now and again um, and because we're on a craft along, absolutely we can. We've got tons of time. I mean, we're not even an hour in and we've already got literally that base of that box all but completed apart from sticking it together. Um, so honestly, we're going to be well on time to get this project uh, start to finish completed. Just gives it a nice little, can you see the difference between the two? Just that little touch on the edge just makes a bit of a difference. And I'm going to repeat that, like I said, on all four panels. Of course, you can go in and go over, but it makes a bit of a mess for me. That. It's a bit, a bit messy. You've got to start wiping things up. Uh, but for me, just go in, hold it, hold it on an angle, and push down onto your cardstock or your paper, and it just gives it a nice little inking. So I'm going to repeat those. Joe, is there any comments coming in? Have we got any more names? Oh, loads of names coming in, Debbie. Uh, well, dog and deer is Mary's suggestion. Do what? Dog and deer. Dog and deer? Yes, yeah, sounds <laughs> like a pub. Oh, should we go for a couple up the dog and deer? <laughs> uh, Just Mary. Yeah. Uh, Joanne's saying, idea, idea, Christmas Eve I put lottery tickets or scratch cards uh, in each place setting. I could get a bunch of the different tickets, put them in envelopes and put the envelopes in this box and everyone could pull one out. <gasps> love that idea. Wow, I love that idea. Do you have any idea. Christmas Eve traditions at yours, Debbie? No. No, we no, don't really. I've never, I've never really done traditions. I've, I've known friends who get together and they'd have like a Christmas Eve, um, like a buffet. Um, but no, we've never really done anything mm. like that. You, do you know why, Joe? For a long time when the kids were little, um, I worked at night, so right. I, I, and I always used to do Christmas Eve. It was one of the busiest oh, really? periods. Yeah. So I used to work most Christmas Eves, usually dressed up and that, but, you know, I, mi I miss a lot of the traditions. Work? Always what? working. Where were you work? working? So that was when I worked. Well, I had about three jobs then, because I, I worked. Well, I mean, because you said you were dressed up, so I'm thinking, dressed pub. up, working Christmas Eve. Oh, in pub. the pub. In a pub. I wondered where yeah. we were going there for a yeah. moment. No, what, what on earth did you think I meant, young I'll man? I'll tell you after the show. <laughs> Yeah, got dressed up in my little elf or whatever costume we decided. Um, that's what we used to do. We used to do that. Oh, for I bet a, you were a fabulous barmaid, Debbie. Oh, I, I do you know. I, oh, well, I, I can imagine sat at the bar with a pint having a good old gossip with oh, Debbie in gosh, the pub. Oh, gosh, yeah, definitely. Fabulous. Playing a bit of Bucks Fees on the Duke box. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Great times. Do you know, I, I actually had, for a long time, I did that job. But on top of other jobs, I used to do like two and three jobs. Um, 
because this is how I, I just had to work. So um, I did those kind of jobs and I loved them. Absolutely mm. loved them. They know I never, I'll never regret any of those that I did. I've worked to uh, work my way around all pubs in, <laughs> in Ireland. <laughs> I think I've, I think I've worked in nearly all of them because <laughs> I did love it. I did love, you know, that. I, I think I love the social side of things. Yeah. You know, obviously it brings its troubles, but it also brings great joy and great friends as well. Because uh, I've made many a friends that I'm still friends with to this day. Um, so I will never, you know. Never regret my time doing things like that. No, it's, absolutely. Uh, good, good fun was had. I used to work in restaurants for a while back in the day, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I absolutely I, loved it. I really, I, really did. I, I did a bit of restaurant work when I was younger, but mm. I was never very good because I couldn't balance things. So I was always <laughs> dropping things on people. <laughs> I once dropped a gravy bowl right down someone's lap. Oh dear. <laughs> and then I proceeded to try and wipe it off him, which of course got me into a whole heap of trouble. <laughs> but that's the things you do, isn't it? That's the things I, you do. I once in a restaurant, Debbie, was I don't know what happened, but I was I had two plates like this and there was a big glass of red wine on the table. Oh, but the, it was a big plate and it was obscuring my view of the table. And as I went to put the plate down with sight some force it hit the top of the full wine glass the oh. wine glass shattered and covered both of the people in red wine oh, oh. no the i thought my gravy disaster i just was a wanted disaster. the ground to open up and swallow me i oh. think one of them might have been wearing like linen trousers as well it was a disaster oh i think it was cream george what well, the lady was in like cream linen trousers that were obviously claret by the time she left Bless her, she only popped out for a bowl of pasta. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, enough about my disasters. Um, Jenny's saying how beautiful these papers are uh, in this box as well. Oh, that, maybe that's what people could let us know. We could have a bit of fun, Debbie. At work disasters. Yes. Erin, you got any at work disasters for me? Oh, I'm pretty sure people have got loads. I bet Erin there is a George clip on, there's a clip on the internet of me pouring egg white over a presenter's head you did many today, years Bradford, ago. You did today, Yeah. Whilst demonstrating a kitchen product. If, you, if you're if you canny with the uh, YouTube searches, you'll no doubt be able to find it. It was a long time ago, like a child in the clip, but it happened. It's still there <laughs> on the internet. Oh, dear, do I remember that? That's when you were quite clean shaven back then, weren't you? Very fresh face, very young man. Well, back it was then? it was ten years ago. That's was probably why. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right. Maybe even eleven years. ago. No, probably eleven years ago now. Bless your cotton picking heart. Oh. Right. What we're going to do, Joe, is we're going to decide now with our boxes. Bring your box back in because we are going to cut through to create, and we're going to start using your dies now. So we've got your dies and your stamps. I'm going to use them in a slightly different way as well. So the stamps, we're going to stamp up separately and cut round. We're going to colour them as well. But we're going to do a little bit of the uh, use of the dies here with the apertures. But first things first, to do this, and I, I, did, I touched on it this morning when it came to um, positioning it down. Think about your box, where you're going to be popping your box. So bring in your box panels just for a second so you can do this. Because I like to do these alternate pieces. So I'm going to have one, one, and the same there so that when I pop this on I've got like alternate pieces does that make sense so it gives a bit of an alternate uh, alternate is that the right word yeah beautiful so I'm gonna move this one out of the way and we actually do you know what we could be doing we could actually stick those shall we do that yeah we'll do let's. that let's get let's get those stuck down let's get those out of the way so let's stick down and I'm using all-purpose glue you can choose glue of choices which is why I've popped on the shopping list tape pens dotty tape pens glues because uh, we all choose different ones it's not just something that is the law that i tell you to use you you use your glue that you use uh, but i'm going to position these into place now if you want to position it in uh, easier tuck all the flaps in and then position that so that you've got it centralized and when you think about where you're popping it it means it's a little bit easier when you're laying it on if you're not very good with doing things uh, uh, you know what's double-sided if that makes any sense does that make sense? It does make sense, Debbie, yeah. yes. So, again, I'm going to go in. Cindy's, and I'm going to Cindy's letting us know, Debbie, that we just must be hopeless because she says, my youngest son, uh, who is in college, is a server at a restaurant and he's never spilt anything on anyone. <gasps> he's very good at his job. Oh, God. Oh restaurant God, managers have been into his workplace and he gets offered jobs all the time. Maybe oh. it's just me and you that are hopeless, Debbie. Well, I'm definitely hopeless. I, I tell you something, it was a very much short-lived career that was one was it? for me. Yes, it was. And it was only while I were at college, we were trying to make ends meet, and so I did myself a little silver service job at night. I wasn't very good. I wasn't very good at all. You, you found your calling now, Debbie. That's I found my thing. calling, yes, absolutely. Now, 
before I stick these two panels down, two ways you can do this. You can cut in using your aperture, and we're going to use the outside aperture. If you're going to use a wet glue, you need to let it dry for a little bit. So for this part, you could actually use, you know, your dotty tape pen just to position it down if you're going to do it in speed, if that makes any sense. I'm not going to actually stick this one down just yet because this, has got, this panel's got to go through the die cutting machine. Okay. And sometimes when you pop on, and I've done it before in the past, where I've popped my glue underneath and then I've die cut over, run it through the machine, and the glue, because of the pressure of the machine, has splurged out at the sides. Oh ruined. dear, so we don't want that. Don't want that. So I'm not going to stick those down. So again, little top tip. And again, if I was at home and I were doing this, I'd have perhaps already glued this left it for a bit and then come back to it. But because we've got time, we're, we're heading towards the halfway mark now, I'm actually gonna use what I did this morning with the dotty tape pen, just to hold it into place. I'm gonna put a little one in one corner and I'm not gonna go mad. I'm just gonna pop a little bit down just to hold it in place. But I'm gonna do exactly the same where I'm going to position. I did say don't put, oh, what did I say? I've put ink all over that blinking mat when oh, I was showing what you what you not like? to do. What not to do what and what like? have I done? I've got ink on my project already, so I'm just going to wipe that up. There we go. Pop that back in. It's a good job it's on inside at box, Joe, and I can get away with this one. Bringing that piece back in, what I've just had. So I'm going to pop that on into place and again, exactly the same. Position it. I hope things didn't get too colourful when you got home last night, Debbie, after your... Uh your little water faux pas that I heard about yesterday. Did you hear about that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. You, what was this? You drank your painting water? Uh, you, well, yes. Was I, it sparkly? I, no. Oh, but I, was, I, was I wish there, it had I, been. I, I, I got a very tickly throat and I thought, I need a drink. There was nothing here. Normally, I have like a little bit of fizzy pop. You know what I'm like with my Cherry yep. Pets Max. I have that underneath. Other drinks are available. Um, pop that underneath there and have a little swig. But I didn't got any of that. The only thing that was there before I coughed and spluttered everywhere was the coloured water. And you so drank I it? it? I had to drink it, yeah. Oh. I had to, otherwise... What colour was it out of interest? Orange. Oh, fabulous. Or orangey, pinky colours. You've got lots of lovely colours in there. Absolutely fabulous. Tasted lovely. Good <laughs> water. And to be fair, we only can't, aqua, uh, only we can't recommend pens. it. It was only an aqua pen. It was just an I've aqua done pen. worse. I've had the blue sparkly around the lips. I've had that before. Live in a demo when I was out and about. I've done that before. Oh, seriously. Now... We've got that stuck down. I'm not going to stick the other panel down just yet because, like I said, this is going to go through the die cutting machine. But what we're going to do is we're going to take your die. Now, think about your die. So I know that this is the, the owl. So if you ever want a visual how this cuts around, and I just want you to look at it for a second, look at your die. Now, the stamp that goes on the outside is the big one for the um, aperture. Debbie's just trying to remember which way around it is. Just give me a second while I... Um, I have got the right one here, haven't I? That's me owl. That's me little one. Just two minutes. This is why I always like to measure because these these stamps have been perfectly designed to work with. I'll just hold that down for a second. That's the sleeping one. That's the one on the front. That's the sleeping one that goes on the inside. That's the inside die aperture. Yep. So that's the inside. That's the inside stamp. We'll move that out of the way for a second. Um, that's that's it little love heart so the stamps themselves have been designed to fit in each one now each one of your designs will be different so you will not have the same apertures in any one of those sets because they've all been designed to work around each one of those like the dog like the cat uh, like the butterfly and obviously the howl with the art so before I actually do any stamping, because we're not going to do that at the moment we want to position our aperture I've got it in the right place so I know that's the right angle I want you to remember when you're positioning this into place, we've got a box lid, Joe, that's going to go over the top and it's going to ah. come an inch down. So can you see, if I just hold that maybe that way... It's going to be see? a bit off kilter if you're yeah, not Yeah, so you need to bring it down a little bit, bearing in mind that you are going to be having a box lid that comes and fits over the top an inch down. So what you could do, if you wanted to make that perfect, would be literally visualise an inch across and then position, so we know that that is a um, six, what is it, six, did we say six and a three quarters, didn't we? Well, we could position it using the ruler and a pencil to get it in the right place. I always do these things by eye, I'm not going to lie, I'm not, um, I'm not one of those that are by too eye. precise. I do it by eye. Um, and just literally, I'm just going to bend over for a second, please excuse me, George. 
I'm going to line that up. I'm using the grids on my mat to make sure that my cardstock's in right, because sometimes you think you've got it by eye, but you don't realise you've got this slightly co cornered off, and you can end up with it um, a little bit on the wonky side. So I'm going to use my glass mat and position. And that looks fine, that Fabulous. one. Fabulous. Yeah, I quite like that one. So I'm going to low tack tape. I'm going to pop that down. like so and i'm going to cover that end and that end so that doesn't move and we're going to run that through our machine so Fabulous. it's a normal thin metal die combination don't forget to spread out your box you don't want to be cutting through both panels um, i'm just going to look at that again joe because i'm not that i'm a perfectionist but i am <laughs> but i can't I love that. not that i'm a perfectionist not but I'm, I'm a perfectionist but i am absolutely i am and i just want to make sure that that's right yeah perfect and then, like I said, thin metal die combination of the plastic shim, magnetic shim, and the other cutting plate then on the top. And we're going to run that through. Fabulous. Uh, Mary Reno says, or Mary Rhino, as we call her affectionately, I do have a grocery store, sorry. I once dropped a three litre bottle of soda. It landed at an angle on the cap, cracked the cap just enough to let the force of the fizz turn it into a spraying oh. missile. Oh, oh my. I love that. Oh. That's an amazing story. Oh, who is that? Mary. Mary oh, Rhino. Mary. Poor Mary. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, dear. I'm glad we're not the only two, Joe. Do you make sure do you warm the cockles of your heart when you realise you're not the only two? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it, it, I don't know about you. Well, I do know you, Joe. It does happen to you a lot. Um, and it happens to me, too. And Debbie Fisher. Debbie's just as bad. I dropped a carton of milk once in the supermarket and it, like, literally landed and started to leak everywhere. And I was so embarrassed I ran away, Debbie. <laughs> I literally just, I just, I'd literally abandoned my trolley and just left. Oh, I couldn't you face didn't. the embarrassment, honestly. You see, it happened to me the other week. Uh, I were having breakfast down at Peterborough. I'd gone upstairs to the canteen, thought I were clever, balancing like a, a you know, like a Greek style yogurt, pot of grapes, pot of melon, and a banana on top. And me walking down, and I went down steps, missed the, so the first, you know, you'll know what I mean, the first top of the steps, missed the bottom step, fell. No. Splattered. You didn't land everywhere. in it. I landed on my knees. Oh, did you land in your yogurt, yogurt? The yogurt that she just made me with the honey in splattered. And when I say splattered, Joe, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> everywhere. This white mess, it had gone all down sides of it. Oh, just gone all over the carpet. <laughs> Miss me. <laughs> Miss me. But I thought about it and I thought I could get away, away with this and run. <laughs> what I could do, but then I thought, no, I can't because this is, a, this is an organisation. Who did this you tell? A, so I went downstairs, told the cleaner, and then the cleaner went and got it sorted. But do you know what? I've been back up since, and you can still see the stains, the white stains. <laughs> oh, Debbie. <gasps> Absolutely everywhere. Could only happen to me. Did if you have to go back up and get another load bag, of yogurt? Did you have to go up and get another load of yogurt and fruit? I didn't dare. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know. So I, I picked my grapes up. I managed to pick my grapes up and save my grapes. Chuck the melon. That melon weren't really, no, I'm not going to bear that. Pineapple junks and all that. My banana were fine because it were in its own skin. Uh, the yoghurt, <laughs> completely dead. There was nothing I could oh, do with that because it was splattered oh. absolutely everywhere. Oh, Happens Debbie. Happens to me all the time. Right, Joe, so when you've done this, you cut this out, remove your aperture parts. You don't need these two bits. They can go in the bin. Um, what you can do now is just lift that off and we're going to glue this down properly now. Now, if at home you were doing this and you were keeping this as a design where you're going to stamp into it, that's when you do your stamping. However, we're going to stamp separately. But what we're going to do is just make sure now it's all covered in that glue, but we haven't got any splodges this time because um, we've already done the die cutting. And then we're going to put our other panel on. Just take that off for a second. There we go, because I've got a little bit left over there. I'm going to line that back up, pop that back in. And now it's secured down properly with the glue. Of course, if you did this at home, you could do the glue bit first, walk away, leave it to dry and all that kind of stuff. Because um, you could do that piece. But again, that just creates that lovely aperture. Perfect. And then I'm going to bring in the other piece and now I can pop it on because I know that the no glue is going to seep out now it's been through the Gemini. So another little top tip there. Again, like I said, if you'd have dried these first and that's, been, that's absolutely fine. But if you're crafting along in real time, it's a little bit trickier because it takes a little while for the glue to dry. But again, just placing it in, positioning it. Always use the wiggle glue as such because it gives you the wiggle time to move it into place. There we go. And now you've got your 
base of your box all done and ready to put together with the first part of the aperture done. However, we need to do the second and the third layer. <laughs> You've just had the funniest Are you all right? <laughs> Are you all right, George? Caroline Finch. <laughs> What's she bought? <laughs> Caroline Finch. <laughs> oh, God, Debbie, hold on. Honestly, stand cross legged because you're going to wet yourself. Uh, <laughs> Caroline French. All right, Erin, just because I'm not going to get this out, I'm going to have to take my earpiece out. Erin's lost it in the gallery. <laughs> my husband fell over a curb whilst carrying a Chinese takeaway, and our son thought his chest had exploded. That's a classic. I love that. <laughs> the trauma. <laughs> That must have been traumatic. How old was your son? Yeah, that's what no I want to know. How that's old hilarious. Was your son, Caroline? Can you imagine he probably saw a sticky rib as well and thought that's definitely oh, going out there? Oh, <laughs> no, the poor little sausage. Is Erin all right in there? She's calmed down. Honestly, she completely lost it. I can hear, I can hear, yeah, I can hear, I can hear a lot of. Are you okay? <laughs> She's going to have abs after this show at this rate. <laughs> Right, because it's been through the Gemini, what I'm just doing is I'm making sure all my lines are nice and burnished. We're not going to stick this down just yet, Joe, uh, because we need to do those inside panels. But I just want to make sure everything's got nice, crisp, burnished lines again. So I'm just making sure I'm going back over just to make sure all those bits are right. Oh, God, I've got visions written in my head now. That's, that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Right, we're going to bring back in our panels and our two pieces. Do you remember our two pieces that we cut shorter just so we could get more longevity out of our cardstock, our paper? What, are you all right, Joe? I've got another one. I think oh I'll God. give it to you in a minute. <laughs> now, what we're going to do is we're going to just position this. Now, don't worry about this bottom bit being a little bit higher up because, like I said, in the box, you're not going to see it at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop our glue on again and we're going to go in with the panels like so. There we go. Now again, if you're cutting your other aperture but you don't want to get any wet glue splodging out anywhere, we just repeat this with that second aperture. So you're going to bring in your smaller aperture now because these have been designed to work where they create that lovely trifold. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> breathe, breathe. Can you see how they've been designed so that they work? Let me just see if I can tilt that so you can see, uh, see it a bit better. Let's turn it over. There we go. On the white side of the cardstock. So you can see they've been designed to work to create that lovely dimension. Like you're looking through um, a window upon a window. Do you know what I mean? That, that aperture for, uh, feel into it. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to position the cardstock on. And we're going to do again. We're just going to repeat it. Little bit in top corner, little bit in bottom corner. Position your cardstock before you actually glue it. Of course, if you're doing the gluing stage and you're leaving it for a while, you can get away with this one for a bit. But I'm, I'm, do you know what? I'm thinking I'm sticking it wrong side down there. That's it. That's better. Now, bringing in your box, you need to position it. Are you okay, Joel? <laughs> I'm just reading this story from Pam. I'm sorry. I, I'm going to tell it to you in a minute. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it out. It's so. <laughs> I need to be. My sides are hurting. <laughs> right, what we're going to do, Joe, we need to create the aperture that sits and fits perfectly on the inside. And Fabulous. I'm just going to bring this in for a second to show you what I mean with the finished one. Can you see how they go in? Yes. And it's like it's a tunnel, isn't it? And it's position yeah, like a tunnel. So it's like positioned. So for this, you need to do this before you stick this together. So again, bring in that smaller die. Use the bottom of this and tuck that bottom flap underneath for a second because what you're going to do is you're just going to position it into its place. So tuck those tabs in for a second so you can't see them. But it helps you, and it's not going to be precise this, but it's going to be more accurate when you can slip it underneath and you can position it into the centre of the square. That is how you would work out how you, where your apertures go. So I'm going to lift that back off again just for a second. Hold it down with your fingers, move that for one minute, pop the low tack tape down again. Let's just put that there. One side, the other side, 
and then pop that through your Gemini as well. So we're going to run that through the Gemini. Do you want to tell us that story now while I'm doing this? Yeah, marketing? right. <laughs> Pam Craven, this is just, oh gosh, it's just, it's the... Uh, we were running a course and staying at a hotel. My colleague and I were a bit late in for dinner. Joe, it was like a Julie Walters sketch. <laughs> We had an elderly lady and she was trying for ages to serve the potatoes with the spoon and the fork. <laughs> she was trying for ages to serve the potatoes with the spoon and the fork. After a few minutes, everyone was silently laughing and we were all trying to keep a straight face. In the end, she just stabbed each of the potatoes to the fork and then wriggled them off on the plate one by one. Oh. How funny is that? Oh my imagine? God, that'd be some, that would be something that happen, would happen to me, let oh, me tell you. That's hilarious. But a good soul. It is it like ends. a sketch out of dinner, ladies. That's what it made me think of. Oh, bless you. Well, Ooh. and that happened to Pam. Yeah, it was Pam. Typical. Typical. I love that. That's good. These are good, these stories. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. <laughs> I bet Tracy's got one or two, but... She but won't she come has. on camera and tell us, she will won't. she? No. She gets Tracy to do a Facebook Live between shows. Oh, yeah, that'd be a good well, one. Will Acosta out the back? Acosta. <laughs> <laughs> now, that creates the second aperture. And can you see the owl design, how it's been specifically designed? So, again, what we're going to do is we're just going to lift that off gently, like so. And we're going to glue this down now properly. So, get your glue again, and then we're going to glue this down. And, of course, if you was doing this without the papers on, you would simply just stamp now your image into there and then do the colouring. Because this would look nice in white as well. I think this would look really lovely in white. Mm. Um, I'm just going for a full-on autumnal feature using those gorgeous owls because I think it fits the design of the, um, the aperture really well. So again, slipping in, sliding it into place, running the glue, make sure all that's done. And that is one of your inside panels that's been precisely cut. And then, of course, you've got the inner part that we're going to keep... We're going to keep that one. We're not going to do anything with that one. But that's the second layer. And then the box is the third layer that fits over. And they all work beautifully together. But, of course, we're going to give these extra dimensions, which is why we've put those tabs in to make it a lot easier on itself as well. So, Joe, I'm going to let everyone catch up with those pieces. And then we're going to do um, a little bit more in terms of uh, stamping. We're going, to use the uh, we're going to use the stamps. So we're going to use the owl stamps or whatever design it is that you've used, um, and create the stamp part that's going to stick into those places. And we're going to do these in stages rather than getting carried away and sticking things together, uh, just because it's a little tricky, and I want to show you how you can, you can avoid the tricky situations. So Fabulous. stay tuned. Um, Christine Coppenraff says, my first job in Holland with a UK company, uh, the boss came to Christmas dinner at their house. I tripped coming out of the kitchen and all of the roast potatoes went absolutely flying <laughs> everywhere. My boss was really nice. He picked them all up, replaced them on the plate and we all ate them. Oh! <laughs> I love that. Reminds me of a story. I was driving a moped when I was in Asia, Debbie, along like a tiny little sort of country back road with, <laughs> with a helmet on. And all of a sudden, a wasp flew into the side of my helmet. Oh my and God. as I was driving along, it stung, stung me four times in the head. So oh. I was like, ah! <laughs> 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 By the time I managed to skid the, the thing to the stop, I threw it on the floor and ripped my helmet off, threw the helmet at the motorhead. And there was no one around, but it was like a faulty tower sketch. I'm kicking oh, the motorbike. I was so, so angry with myself. Anyway, uh, I want to tell you... A are you right? <laughs> I'm just like, ah, 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 and try not to crash as well at the same time. Oh, anyway, the 6x12 smooth card stock, I want to tell you about this, because this is great to go with the tripod apertures. It's perfect size for you. Just do a try score on here, and then that is perfect and good to go. You get 50 sheets in there as well. It's a duo for you on that particular one uh, just there. We've also got... Uh, the Nina cardstock as well available for you uh, on a multi buy uh, as well, which is great. Three packs, 48 sheets in total for you, £11 or $17 if you want to go for that one. Right, I wonder if Sean's got any disastrous stories to share with us. Sean strikes me as quite, you know, cool, calm, and in control, so maybe she hasn't got any. Have you got any, Sean? Um, yes. You have? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh. I was away in Ibiza with um, my boyfriend and it was starting to get dark. We'd hired a quad and um, we were like, oh, we need to rush back. And then we couldn't find the light, 
like the switch for the head for the headlights of the oh, pod. No. Um, so we were like, oh, we're just gonna have to drive back with no headlights. And so we drove all the way back from the other side of the island. And um, then as soon as we got back, we found the switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. that is typical, is it? It's so typical. Hire cars are one of those things. If you get to a roundabout in Spain and your window wipers start going, say the indicators, they know what that means apparently. They're used to us British people <laughs> being there. Uh, how are you getting on, Sean? Are you managing to uh, keep up? Yeah, I've just um, finished gluing all the fabulous bits down. looking yeah. great debbie isn't it yeah absolutely ah absolutely. wonderful all right sean we'll drop in on you again really really soon uh well i'll give you one more quick story for you uh coming back from lunch a bum this is something that would happen to you debbie i've got visions of this happening to you <laughs> coming back from lunch a bumblebee got down the back of my blouse i came in screaming get it out get it out i was very modest but i was begging my boss to get under my shirt and get the bee out for me Get it out! Get it out! Can you imagine? <laughs> Debbie, that's got you written all over it. <coughs> but it has because it happened to be at barbecue. No! Ben, did you not? Did you not no, I don't know being, being what stung? Because I got stung on my leg. There were wasps absolutely everywhere. We went to the staff barbecue, the opening night for Sarah's Strictly debut. Um, and was with Ben and everybody. We were sat around the tables and this wasp flew up my dress. <laughs> and stung me in a very... <laughs> <laughs> Where? Inappropriate place on my leg. Oh no! And I was screaming, like, ah, oh, oh, it's killing, it's killing. And I'm like, I just need to get this thing out, I just need to get this thing out. And I was asking if anybody would help me get this thing out, realising where it was situated. I was like, nope, I can't. <laughs> because that, that's just too inappropriate. Oh, Especially Debbie. as Ben's wife was there. And I looked at Ben to help me, but he was like, I can't, Debbie, I can't. He said, normally I'd, like, do you know when to get your st stings out? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Debbie's saying. I think we best take a break. I think that's a great point to take a break. Here's, uh, <laughs> here's clubbing spot. Uh. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafter's companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course the Club Inspire community group on Facebook where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration and of course you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend and the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. Welcome to Crafters TV. With more than 35 hours of live shows each week, it's your home for all things craft. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products with live tutorials and demonstrations. Join our family of craft experts where fun happens every day. Quiet. Ah, oh, the neighbors. I'm all out of Zoom. I'm so lost without you. I'm not, I'm not singing, I'm not singing. Lisa, if you email in, don't send a picture of your air fryer. Make sure it's something creative. Get creative and craft along. With our amazing deals, your next craft project is just a click away. Tune in live seven days a week, or you can watch us on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook, or our YouTube channels. You can chat to us, craft along, and meet new friends by joining our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like, um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. Joy, there's not a dry eye in the studio here. <laughs> Debbie's welling up, I'm welling up. There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. Crafters TV, create every day. There's some amazing stories coming in. We'll keep keep them coming in, and I'm going to give. Uh, I'll I'll, um, 
<laughs> I'll tell some more of them as I go along. Anyway, right, I'll chuckle there uh, under the break. We did get to the end of the story about Ben, but I can't share it with you, I'm afraid. Uh, right, Debbie, if you're ready to go, I think everyone else is just about ready to. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So we're going to do some stamping. Now, Nina Cardstock for me is the best optimum cardstock to use when it comes to alcohol markers so i'm placing my oh i forgot my stamps yeah i've got my stamps up right way around i'm just thinking place my stamps onto my platform um i'm going to use um also as well one of the sentiments on there so i'm just going to place my sentiment on lovely thing about these um um stamping platforms it's got the grids on so you can centralize at things like sentiments so i'm going to pop that onto there and then we're going to ink this up and we're going to stamp onto the nina cardstock because we're going to do some alcohol coloring of course if this is your project if you want to choose other things to um to color with then just think about what you're going to stamp onto if you're using watercolor use watercolor cardstock uh, and your watercolor products like your aqua pens tricolors sparkle pens uh, glitter markers all those kind of things that are water soluble but if you're using alcohol marker then nina cardstock is the best one for you i'm giving it a nice little light tap everywhere i've used actually I'm, i thought so i've got a flagstone i'm thinking this isn't black i can tell it's not black however i'm not too bothered but i'm just giving a nice little short start uh, short um short taps that's the word short taps oops don't do that i'm just gonna have to go back over that because i just touched it with my finger and then we're going to go and stamp directly onto our nina cardstock and i'm just going to make sure i've got a nice clean stamp now if you don't get a nice clean stamp the first time don't worry you can stamp some more images we're not in no rush we've still got what is it 40 minutes left still got 40 minutes yeah, left got loads of time. so we'll, we'll get this done oh debbie just one little love art. I thought I'd got it right. Never mind. Let me stamp him up again. Can we move those? There's a ones? lot of well, there's a lot of driving ones coming in, Debbie, at the moment, which is quite fabulous. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, Chell says we are her favourite duo. No contest. Oh, that that's lovely. Thank you. That's really sweet. Very sweet. Thank you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to re-stamp that one and make sure I get my love art down. There we go. Yay, that's better. Uh, right, so we're going to do um, now the colouring bar. But what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to separate it from the rest of the Nina cardstock. So I'm just going to move these out of the way. Um, <clears throat> scissors, what did I do with them? There, let's get this. So I'm just going to snip out. I'm not too bothered about this one now because I didn't quite catch him right. But uh, we're just going to snip out those two pieces. We'll save that for another time. I've got my fan on and every time I put a piece of cardstock, Joe, it literally oh, no. it literally blows all over. Now I'm gonna bring in um a bit of blotting paper for underneath my okay, colouring because no. I'm gonna do some colouring. Uh, and now shy brains, it's up to you, because obviously depends what um image you've gone with. I've gone with me owls, so just choose your um mediums and your colourways that fit your papers and also fit um the theme of your card so if it's a cat or a dog or whatever it is that you're doing or the butterflies choose your colors um the ones i'm using are dark red blend gold brown blend gold yellow blend dull green blend and earth brown blend if you're doing with the owls uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do a spot of color in your my favorite thing and um i'm using some mixtures of um try blend brush pens to try blend pens as well now again, colouring wise, always start with the um, lightest colour and then you work your way up from light to dark to mid back to light again, depending on, I mean you can do block colouring, if you don't want to do all the shading you can do some block colouring, I suppose it you I like shading takes it to uh, another dimension. Yeah, I think so. I think sometimes I find shading a little bit tricky on really small areas, Debbie. Yes, so and I would it can just go be. for a block colour then. Absolutely. And these are um, a smaller image. Did I go? I thought I'd gone wrong colour then, Joe. I thought that looked darker than me. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. But this is the bit that I get. Are you laughing at some more stories do you, do coming you want, in? Do you, want, do you want some more? Come on. I think we've, well, I think, well, I'm going to build up to that one because I think we're going to break the internet with this one. Um, well, we did ask. Right. My sister has heat sensitive sensitivity and had problems balancing hot dishes on her arm. She was given the top tip to put socks up her sleeve to protect her skin. Worked well till one fell out and landed in someone's soup. <laughs> <laughs> Love, that, love one. that one. 
Uh, Bethlin says, I used to work in a hospital. We used to have mini cereals for breakfast. I opened one for a patient that was being a bit tricky, pulled a bit too hard, and the patient was showered in cereal. Oh, Imagine no. that. Uh, this is something, that I've had something similar to this. Heather says, our windshield wiper motor went on our car, so I took out my shoelaces, attached them to the wipers, and through the windows, and I operated the wipers while my boyfriend, now husband, drove in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a funny one, that one. I, I like used that to drive one. this proper clapped out old banger, Debbie, and um, the jets had gone, you know, that you wash the window screen with. So I used to have to keep a big bottle of wa water in a sports bottle in my car, and occasionally, sometimes, I'd have to reach out and squirt, <laughs> the, wa squirt the water out the front <laughs> over the window screen. If you're going down the motorway, it's quite a challenge. I'd have to slow down to about 50 and get in the outside lane. I'd just have to squirt in a certain direction because the wind would just take it off to the car I'm behind. I'm back in. I've yeah. done that, yeah. Sorry. Oh, I've had to do that before when I've realised I've got no windscreen wiper <laughs> uh, 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 fluid. Yeah, absolutely. But this is the oh. best one, Debbie. Oh, God, uh, that's I mean, Funny. This is a cross leg moment again, I think. Mary Rhino. <laughs> I was driving down, driving over a highway bridge on the water. I had my windows in, and a seagull flew into my window on the driver's side. Oh my! I God. don't know which one of us was more freaked out. I'll tell you, they are much bigger up front and personal. <laughs> I was just, <laughs> I was just trying to stay alive and not crash. I finally got hold of one of the legs with one hand and managed to shove it out the window with the <laughs> other hand still on the wheel. <laughs> like that, get out! <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't see. <laughs> Once I was driving my car and a seagull dive bombed me, Debbie, and hit the window screen. And I honestly I thought I was going to have a heart attack. It was a good job I was only in a 30 because oh. it would have been enough to like oh literally. My God. But I didn't, it just came out of nowhere. Boom, straight into <laughs> the window screen. No, it was, it might have been the side one. It was not, it was scary anyway, whatever happened. Oh, oh I'm glad God you lived to tell you. the tale. Oh, that's so funny. Joe, you seem to have a lot of mishaps. I'm oh, not going to lie. They seem to follow you around. They, they really do. do. Oh, that's hilarious. I love that one. Oh, my God. I can't, honestly, <coughs> I've had wasps so blowing the size and things of the like seagulls. that. The seagulls in the US, Debbie. Oh, the seagulls near SeaWorld, honestly, in Florida. Really? They, you walk along with an ice cream. They just come down and they swoop it straight out of your hand. A cone of, cone of chips or fries. Honestly, anything. You oh. have to literally eat undercover or they're going to get you. And they're like, honestly, they're like... I don't know, really, they're, they're massive, absolutely huge. No, that would terrify me. That yeah. would terrify me, that. I wouldn't like that at all, Joe. I really wouldn't like that at all. Uh, what colours are you using here, Debbie? So this one I'm using in the face is the gold brown. I've used red, dark, uh, the red shades in that, the gold, uh, sorry, the dark nice. red blend. I've used the, um, I think that was the dull green blend. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm just doing the shading. Like I said, it, you'll, you'll choose your colours appropriately because I know I'll be conscious that not everybody's doing the owl. People will have chosen maybe something else. Um, but all I'm just remembering is that I start with the light, go in with the dark to do some shading, and then back in with the medium, and then lastly, the light again, just to, just to get that lovely seamless blend. Um, and that's, what, that's all you remember to do. And that would be with any of your colours. So, always your light dark to add your shading uh, medium and then uh, back in with the light again so i'll do that again on here so you can see it so i'm going in with the light i'm going to shade with the dark so i'm going to pop some dark underneath Any other funny stories you'd like to share with Debbie? I bet you've got hours worth of these stories. Oh, I would have. I'd fill a full show with it. I'm telling you. But yeah, I've got I've, what? Oh, there's so many, literally so many. But then I'm going to go back in with the light, Joe. Uh, Crafty Angie wants to know what's the difference between the super smooth and that obviously is coming with the trifolds and the Nina, or are they essentially the same thing, Debbie? So the super smooth that's coming in with what, sorry? That's coming in with the um, trifold. It's an ultra smooth cardstock, it's described that's as. That's still a beautiful cardstock, and you can stamp and colour directly onto Wonderful. that. You'll get a beauty. It's, it's not quite near the cardstock, but it's smooth. So there's not a lot of, uh, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Do you know the grains? Um, it is super smooth. And I know because I've used that particularly stamped straight onto it and it colours beautifully. Nina cardstock is always something I choose to go when I'm adding 
to stamp, you know, stamps and adding to projects. But that super, super smooth cardstock is absolutely fabulous for these to stamp <laughs> directly onto and, I know, sorry, and <laughs> pop in uh, straight onto your colouring medium. So, yeah, absolutely. There's no, not, not too much difference. Nina cardstock is just the Nina, and is it called, is it Nina Crest? Nina Crest small card, I think it is. Solar White? I know, I think it's called Solar White, yes. It's Nina just Classic slightly Crest different. card? Yes, that's the one. And it's got like um, a slightly different tone to a white, like a stamping card that's quite pure white. And stamping card would work as well. However, premium optimum results, Nina card, perfect. But that card stock that's coming with your kit is absolutely fine to stamp directly onto and colour directly onto without it affecting, you know, without it like doing too much it's the right word i'm looking for where it doesn't affect your color and Excellent. your medium it's absolutely beautiful it really really is well, that's so good that's a know. good question though that joe good it question really is uh, don't forget as well there's loads more coming up not just today but also tomorrow here i'm here with you all weekend on crafters tv we've got a, a totally tiffany takeover craft house this evening myself and tiffany should be joining us live from Arizona, that'll be spectacular. Tomorrow as well, the lovely Bernie Corner is her last show with us Ooh. tomorrow. So a very, very special softer side uh, tomorrow with myself and Bernie. Please make sure uh, you join us both for that. Then Debbie Fisher is here with me for a craft along tomorrow. And uh, we will also have Second Chance Sunday. I'm here on Monday with Triple Jan. Haven't seen Jan for ages. I know we're going to have uh, a foiling masterclass, which will be lovely. And we will also have uh, our Monday Makers show. And then Tuesday, I th oh, we'll have Wake Up Call, of course. Oh, yeah, every day. Um, on Tuesday, uh, Wake Up Call, uh, Craft Along, and then Launch Party. And then I won't be here for Wake Up Call on Wednesday. Uh, the lovely Becky will be here for that. Uh, but I will be here for a craft along. And can I tell them about what's happening in the evening? Yay! Party! Can I tell... No, not on Wednesday. Oh, you're can not I, a party? Am I allowed to say, Erin? Ooh, what's Ooh. happening on Wednesday? Is it Creative Cravings? Mm, no, there is no Creative Cravings on wave Wednesday, I do, don't believe. Oh, I wonder what's happening. Honestly, I don't even know. I have no idea, Joe. No idea. Oh, don't think we're allowed to talk about it until Monday. That's probably why I don't know anything about it. Yes. But I can tell you on Monday, you'll have to wait till then. That's interesting. Mm. George, you really know? Yeah. Right, after it's sure you're telling me. Okay. Because I, I genuinely don't know. It'll be my last show before Christmas as well, so please make sure you come and join me for an extended three-hour show from seven. I can say that Does much that and not get told off. Boss. It means the boss is here, yeah. The boss is in. Wow. That's going to be amazing. I'm not saying anything. <clears throat> I'm not saying anything. Right, going in now with uh, me, for me, um, Owl itself, Hearth Brown Blend. I've started with the light, and again, I'll, I'll work in, in areas, but I'm going to go in with the dark. And again, I'm just doing some areas where I think there might be a bit of shading. Uh, Rosalind says, when will you guys be back live for the new year? I will be back here, the first live show. If it's got pre-recorded programming for you every single day over uh, Christmas and New Year, I'll be back here... Oh, I'm allowed to say I'm, I'm with on the third? Yeah, Craig, yeah. Ah, oh, me and Craig will be your first show in the new year on the 3rd of January at midday in the UK, 7am. Wake up call with Craig, back where he belongs, uh, on the sofa, which is going to be fabulous. Absolutely. Oh, wait for that. And you've so got me. I've got you as well. Yeah, you've got me for a double. What a treat. Double trouble. Um, uh, it's going to be amazing. So, yeah, live programming, back to our normal schedule from the 3rd of January. Uh, we are like are we live on the, we're live on the 23rd that's our last day live is it brilliant yep. and then uh, we're back we mm. live again on the third yep absolutely it's Come nice on. that we get a break isn't it debbie christmas break i'm really looking forward to it yeah. i am really really looking forward to it i'm looking forward to spending some time at home um seeing my little grandchildren if everything's okay to do so uh but yeah it's gonna be good it's gonna be really good can't blooming wait deck the halls Get the turkey out. Oh, God, no. Turkey? No turkey? No, 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 no. What? Although we've still got this debate going off of what we're doing on Christmas. You what? We've got the Chinese debate. Have you not heard of this? You having a Chinese takeaway? No, I don't want a Chinese takeaway. It's my daughter's first Christmas in a home. I and said turkey? She, no, she, no, she's vegetarian. So she's de she would de definitely have turkey. So what are you going to have? Nut roast? Well, no, they want to do, uh, they want to do a Chinese. Oh, Debbie. Don't. 
It's a sore point. It's well, a little bit of a sore point uh, at the minute. We're just trying to work on it. Um, and I don't want to be away from them at Christmas because it's the first Christmas and she's invited us up. My son's already down tools. He's going to my sister's because he says he's not having a Chinese on uh, Christmas Day. He likes his full works, meat and veg and everything else. Roast taties, roast parsnips, ev everything, the whole trimmings. Um, and... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know what me and Tanya are going to do. I'm going to a very odd Christmas gathering. Uh, very odd Debbie. Christmas a gathering? very odd Christmas gathering, yes, because um, I'm going to a friend of mine, a friend of mine and his partner. Uh, they've been together a couple of years now. I don't really know the partner very well. I don't really know the, my friend. Uh, and they've just renovated their house. They're having four friends over. I'm one of the four friends, but none of the four friends know each other. Oh, what a, what a possibly strange Christmas that could be. Yeah, or it could be absolutely an utterly fabulous. fabulous Christmas. I was just thinking the same. Uh, Who knows? Joe, it could be absolutely fabulous. Couldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be one of those that uh, you won't know until you're there. I mean, I know. I won't commit to stay for too long, just in case. And then you'll be there, last one out. Yeah. Knowing you. Oh, as soon as my Christmas puts done, whoop. Stephanie says, I must say, you two have had me in stitches today. Thanks, I needed some good belly laughs and I've had exactly that. Well, you're Aww. more than welcome. Why do, uh, Heather says, why do seagulls fly over the sea? Uh, uh, I don't know. Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. <laughs> <laughs> Wah. There you go, oh, love that dear. one. Oh, that's good. There's some belters, isn't there? I mean, I, I can never remember them. I, I laugh a lot. I laugh a lot at jokes, but I can never remember them. I'm not very that's good. That's my problem. I'm not very good with remembering jokes. I heard one about something about Santa and his sleigh, about being charged, car park charged, and something about, no, it's on the house, and I can't remember it. I still can't remember it now. I'm giving you the pun there. <laughs> but I honestly, I'm rubbish at it. I'm honestly rubbish at joke telling. Now, I'm just going to give it a little actually finishing touch while that's just um, just drying off. I'm going to go around with the ice grey. I'm going to go with the ice grey too this time. Um, and I'm just going to give it a little, it just makes it pop a little bit. You've seen Craig do this loads of times and some of the other demonstrators do. I, I love doing this technique. It just gives it a nice little finish, especially... Now, in this set, there's no dies to cut around these, so we're going to get a little scissors in a minute, and we're going to fussy cut around them, because we want to release them, and then pop them into their uh, place in the apertures. So, again, I'm just going to do it the same with this one. I'm going to go around. How are we doing for time? We're doing all right for time. Yeah, you've got 23 minutes and... Perfect. 35 seconds left. Perfect. Absolutely no turkey for Beth at Christmas Day. We do spaghetti, homemade sauce, and meatballs. Mm. Who said that? Beth. Who's a lot Beth? of people, though, maybe, I think, from reading between the lines, Debbie, because a lot of people have their turkey meal, Thanksgiving turkey meal, a lot of people tend to maybe mix it up from what I'm hearing at Christmas and don't necessarily have... Seems like people... Am I right, Erin? People have, like, the traditional turkey meal we'd have at Christmas, maybe for Thanksgiving, and then maybe mix it up a little bit at Christmas. Ham at Christmas. I do love a ham. You love a what? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Poor little thing. Poor oh. little thing. Oh, I didn't realise I'd done that thing. to him then. Uh, I that love the addition of the gel pen. I love. Well, I love my gel pens when they don't dry out on me, but it just gives it a little bit... Do you know when people struggle with the... Um, uh, what do they call it? Preserved highlight. Yeah. What do they call it? So I just cheat a little bit and I pop some on. Uh, and I just give them little touches, so it just gives them a little bit of um, dimension. You can do this with, um, do you know the pens that we have with the, oh, now then, they come in three different nibs, metallic markers. Yep. You could do that with this as well, so you could actually give them a little bit of a, an extra little highlight, uh, and it just gives them a little finishing touch, just in areas, pop a little bit down underneath his belly, preserve that highlight a little bit more in my love heart, and look at him snoozing, little snoozer. Uh, but again, just give them a little highlight, and you can just pop those in little areas where you think maybe they'd be a little bit. Oh, how cute! They are so honestly super cute. So cute. Grab your little scissors. Now I'm just going to just pr just take that one out because I'm going to cut that down in a moment. My sentiments, but you're going to grab your scissors now, and then you're going to cut around. 
the image and you're just going to fussy cut so literally turn your cardstock try and keep your scissors straight makes it a little bit easier to get a neater cut so i guess having the grey outline makes it a little simpler as well does it Debbie? it does and also not only that it softens the edge do you know, instead of having a really harsh white edge and it's one of the reasons i know why craig definitely does it just it and not only does it make your image pop but it softens the um the whiteness of the cardstock if that makes any sense in my head it did just then yeah, but no, uh, it, does. it just gives it a really nice soft soft finish so again i'm going to go in and just use my scissors to fussy cut all the way around like so Debbie, are these the new festive nails that you've got on? No, I've not had a chance. I've been working. I've, been, I've literally worked solid. I've not had well, any chance to get there. I didn't want to ask I couldn't remember if these were the same nails as no, last time. No, they're the time. same nails. I've not had a chance, Joe, so I, I don't know if I'm going to get <gasps> my festive nails on because oh, no. I'm working solid through. Apart from Ezra's birthday off, I'm off to Peterborough tomorrow night. I'm going to spend a few hours with the kids. Why um, don't we get some acrylic paint markers? I could just try and paint them over for you. <laughs> I've got a little candy stripe on there or something, I reckon. Oh, bless you. Well, I went into Peterborough and I had a little, had a little walk around Peter in between shows and um, went to go and have a look. But do you know the queues? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I thought really? there's no way. Yeah, they were really busy. So I thought, nope. I think everybody were trying to get the Christmas nails on. Right. So I thought, nope, uh, they can wait. Um, so I'm going to try and get in on... Are we maybe going to get a very sparkly New Year nail instead? I well, I was thinking perhaps I missed the boat of the Christmas Christmas ones, so I'm thinking New Year ones. But um, I'll probably have some, hopefully, have some on when I'm in on the last day, which is the 23rd. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay. Watch this space. Watch this space, yeah. I had planned. I got all my little decorations planned. I'm going to have Father Christmas. I'm going to have some snowflakes. But I think I'll have missed the boat because Christmas is, I can't believe I'm saying this, next week. Christmas is a week today, isn't oh, it? Oh, dear right? Lord. Christmas is a week today. This time next week, we'll have had fabulous arguments, brilliant <laughs> dinners, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> gifts. <laughs> The whole thing. Oh, do you know what? For me, it's not about gifts and things like that, or food or drinking. It's about spending time with my loved ones. I'd, I've said this to my daughters. I'm like, I don't want anything. I just want you home. Oh, this, but that's the nice. both of them and my son all together. Um, that's Eating all the Chinese. I want. You what, love? Eating the Chinese. Don't, <laughs> don't. That's still a sore point. That's still a sore point. But yeah, I just, I, ju I just want to be in their company, um, and I'm really looking forward, to, especially to me eldest daughter coming home because it's been a while since I've seen her. So really looking forward to that. Now you've got all your little images cut out, so I'm just going to remove those for a time because what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to construct this together. So you've got your two images. Look how gorgeous they look. I'm just going to trim this down. So bring back in your guillotine. Just move that out of the way. And we're just going to trim this to size. And literally, there's no specifics with this. It's just a case of trimming it down. Um, Debbie, can, I, can I borrow your finish one of your craft along? Would you mind? Of course you can. Because we're going to do the vote for the card of the day. Because obviously we won't have one later. Oh, okay, there you go. And that's all. Oh, it's a very sturdy box you've got. It's Debbie. very sturdy, it yes. Absolutely it is. And yours is going to be sturdy when you've finished it. Absolutely it is. So I've got You Have My Heart. And then I'm just going to move that to one side. I mean, I think it's going to be a little bit of a no contest, Debbie, but, you know... Do you think so? Are you going to do the vote uh, now while, is, we, while I'm is, getting ready? Yeah, this is a modern democracy, therefore we need to give people the opportunity to vote. So you can go for the um, Play Your Crafts Right demo, or you can go for this one, uh, the Craft Along. I mean, one for Play Your Crafts Right, two for Craft Along, for the card of the day, uh, your... The choice is yours, absolutely. Crafters TV on Facebook, Crafters Companion. If you're across on YouTube, let us know. Get back to us, slide to the DMs. Right, so I have got my coloured images. I've got my sentiment. Well, now what we're going to do, I'm just going to move these. Uh, in fact, before I forget, Joe, I'm actually going to put them back on the carrier sheet because I know what I'm like. I end up losing stamps. Is anybody else the same? So I'm going to put everything back on the carrier sheet before I lose things because that is one of my worst things that I do. I'm always forever losing bits. So what we're going to do now is we're going to bring in, so we're going to bring in some panels. This is when you need your red liner tape. So I think I put red liner tape. I'm pretty sure I put red liner tape on me, uh, me um, uh, instructions. Thank you very much, producer Erin. That's the one I was looking for. Um, 
but yes so bring in your red liner tape you're going to pop some red liner tape onto uh, all of these panels what i'm going to show you now so we're going to pop one onto this side i'm going to snip that off should i want to know if you'll be reading us a christmas story this year debbie oh i know i love that christmas story i did do you know what that's the christmas story i read when you were joining it was the christmas before you joined us oh, was it? in the new year yeah oh i loved reading that story and i love doing story time i used to do that to the kids because i was a nurse nurse many many moons ago and story time was one of my favorite favorite times of the day with the kids in the nursery and i used to so get engrossed i love telling stories with safi now um ezra's still a bit too young but when he's a little bit older i'll be reading him stories because i get really involved i put on all play voices i just love story time it's one of my favorites um, so yeah, I do love telling a story and that was when I did that last story time. It was a, a poem by the lovely Laura um, and we read it because it had a little bit about you in it. Did it? Lovely. Yeah. Oh, I've never heard about it. About the it new face. Yeah, oh. it's a, I think you'll find it ready, 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 ready available. Ready I'll somewhere. I'll have to go and try and find <laughs> it. <laughs> now, we're going to pop on our panels for our lid. So we're going to go on with the lid, get your glue. I think I think I might have dried up again. Have we, have we turned the eating off in here? Because honestly, this glue, oh, it's got a bit clogged. That's what the problem is. It's got clogged. Oh, dear. So I'm going to pop that onto the top. We're going to decorate all the sides before we get it, uh, pop it together, Joe. So Okey I'm just going to clean my um, little end there. That's it. That's better. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to use, um, again, a contrasting paper. I, I like quite, well, I suppose really it depends what you like, isn't it? I'm going to go with that one. I like, I like that checked. I think it's really quite pretty. Now, I'm not going to see any of your lovely makes, so do you know what I want you to promise me, if you've done the craft along, I want you to share them on the socials, tag me in it so I can see them, because uh, it's not, I'll, honestly, I love seeing people's take on a craft along, but obviously, um, it's me done today, in a moment, I shall be done for the day, um, so we're not going to be able to see the craft along makes, so I want you to share them on our social media pages. Um, whether it's I'm a crafter's companion, the, where you could go onto mine if you wanted and share it on mine. Uh, but just make sure you tag me in it so I can see it. Because sometimes people forget, and it's Debbie, D E B B Y Robinson, a crafter's companion. And just so you can see, so I can see your beautiful work. Because uh, I do love that. There you go. There, there you go. You can find me on it, um, find me on Facebook or find me on Instagram um, and share your lovely makes with me. Because I'd really do love to see. Uh, things and you know what I love as well somebody tagged me in a post the other day from a craft along that I did a while ago that I completely forgot about right so lovely to see the work it was yeah. honestly really lovely to see the work and they tagged me so I saw it um because I do I do love that you know being able to see people's work so I'm popping red liner tape because this is a construction box and I do like to use red liner tape. I've talked about this many a time when I do construction um, and I like to uh, use red liner for that purpose. It's super strong, double-sided adhesive. Um, and again, it's just a lot easier to do. And it's always easy as well, decorating before you actually pop your panels together, Joe. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to do this. I'm hoping we're going to get this put together actually before we finish. <laughs> Um, I'm going to put some more red liner tape because I've got two more um, flaps to pop some onto. So I'm going to pop it on to this one and snip, burnish, and exactly the same on this last one. I think the bottom ones of these, I'm going to use some glue, some wet glue. So I'm going to go in and again, I'm going to pop that across like so. Debbie, are you excited for... I am indeed. I'm hoping I'm going to be home for it. You should get it. home just in time, I reckon. I hope to so. To watch me I and Tiffany on so. Totally Tiffany Takeover. That's Well, do you know, if I, I, I shall be watching you as well because then I've seen you... some things that I want oh, okay. and I'm going to have you both on. Okay. I'm going to have one on my watch, iPad. You could watch Strictly on Catch Up later. Well, that's the thing, you can. However, I think the results are live tonight, aren't they, as well? I'm Does sure it end tonight? tonight? There's no show tomorrow? There's no show. To, I'm sure, I'm sure oh. to goodness, there's no... I think it's all live tonight. There we um, are. But yes, I shall be Sarah having you back. both on. You both. I'm going to have you both on. I'm going to have you on, and I'm going to have Strictly on at the same Fabulous. time. Fabulous. Uh, yes, lovely Sarah, of course, will be there again uh, on as part of the Strictly final. 
Yeah. So that's what am I going to do on a Saturday night now? I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I always, I, I always feel I go into like strictly blues every year. Yeah. Uh, because I do miss it. Maybe um, I could rewatch some of the old seasons. Yeah, you could you know, do. You to get over it. Uh, the one with Kelvin Fletcher is absolutely amazing. Okay. Just say. Um, but yeah, I'm just popping some foam pads just onto the back. Um, and what I'm going to do is, because I want to give him a little bit of a lift. So on my front one, this is my front panel, I'm going to pop him directly over the top. And then on the inside panel, and I'm going to pop him on right now, because it'll be a bit tricky to get him on afterwards. But just make sure, I don't think that's sticky, sticky. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of extra glue just down. Yeah, should be okay, that actually. And that just sits in like so. Now, that's that one done. Obviously, he's going to sit onto there as well. So, actually, we'll pop him on. We'll get him on now. And we'll just pop that across. And you'll see it fits in absolutely perfectly because the aperture is cut out. And it just, it just gives it that lovely little lift. And again, when you're seeing them side by side, they look absolutely divine. They really do. Uh, but we need to put a box together. So, first things first, we are going to pop our one flap to the straight edge so again lift off your uh, red liner tape like so now i prefer when i'm doing this to pop this down together and i before i actually commit to sticking it joe i just have a little tap of it down turn it over make sure everything looks nice and flush when i'm happy that it's nice and flush and by flush, I mean making sure your box sides are all straight. I'm quite happy with that. And I'm going to go down and commit to it. Now, you could use over the top of your red liner tape some all-purpose glue because it gives you a bit of wiggle time to get it into place. But you can see now that forms your box. Obviously, though, we need to pop our panels in. So how your panels will sit in, one, this one is going to sit closest to the first edge, so like so. So if I just bring that up for a second, you can see if you want a little bit of a gap, you're just going to move it along and I'm probably going to move it along about an inch. So I'm going to pop that down first. So I'm only going to remove one side and I'm going to pop my glue because I do need a bit of wiggle time here. I'm not going to risk wiggle, it for wiggle, this wiggle. one. And I'm going to go in, tuck the flap underneath and I'm going to just give it a little position about half an inch in. When we take it down to the bottom, so you want it to go on the bottom flap, not not directly on that fold, because it'll be difficult to, to put that together. But we're going to go in like so, and make sure you get it a nice burnish. Oh, and so that like fits. You burnish it with <laughs> I do like to do it that way. So you can see now when it comes and folds in, Perfect. it sits perfectly in there. Uh, and then I'm going to put the second piece in. So the the other panel. Again, you could have it lined up side by side. So when, I take, when I'm talking like that, you've got another probably half an inch gap in between. Um, so you could do that. Or again, it depends on the gap. It depends on the level of the gap that you want. Uh, but we're going to pop on, again, just a bit of glue, like so. And I'm going to pop, position that just where the fold is. Let me just make sure I've got that the right way around. Debbie, not the wrong way around. There you go. Oh, Position. Debbie, I really wanted to say that it was the wrong way around. But I, I hate, I hate. Do you hate, know what? I've I don't realized. know what to do. I don't know what to do because if I see it happen, I just don't feel like I'm qualified to. But in you a can like, because I have, got it, I have got it the wrong way around, Joe, and I'm so glad you did because but I was I looking at it thinking, oh, no. I didn't say because what if I tell you you've got it the wrong way around and you haven't got it the wrong way around and I got it wrong? No, I'm then so I'll glad. Like a silly Billy. I am so glad you <laughs> was just about to say that because you've <laughs> saved me from um, a, a near disaster is what you've <laughs> saved me from. Uh, so, yes, I had got it the wrong way around thank you very much for that joe because that made such a difference now when you're folding this over you can make life like jan always says make life easy for yourself when you're doing this so i'm going to remove all the uh, sticky panels of course you could do this and put these in afterwards but it gets a little bit messy not gonna lie um and i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring these panels around because this is how it's going to work that's going to fold in like so this is going to be the bottom at uh, the side part that's going to fold up and that's going to fold in. But I want to remove this panel. And like I said, this will be the, probably the trickiest bit. But if you put some wet glue on, you'll be able to do a little bit of saving grace. Oh, how many? Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Where 
did the time go? And there's me, I said to Erin, might even get another card, we might even get another card done. Silly old me. Silly old me. It's what? Oh, it's good This concept God. of time is Honest, not. the concept of time, it just absolutely, literally, it flies by. So it's a bit tricky to do this uh, with the camera, so I'm going to just pop this in, and so I know that I've got it positioned into place when I'm going in. And again, having the wet glue makes a bit of a difference. Oops, she says. Let's, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold it up. Let's get that on. Because I'm conscious we need to go back to... Is it Sean as well? We need to go and say oh, goodbye yeah. to Sean and see how Sean is doing as well. Oh, my God, Erin, stop telling me the time. <laughs> I'm like, panic, panic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Now, can you see inside, apart from the little one there, having the wet glue just gives you the ability to get it into position and into place so that when you look at it from there, let's do it from that angle, that angle, that angle, there you go. And so all we're going to do now is we're going to pop on our bottoms. So we literally make sure as well as well when you're folding it, because it will fold down, you can fold it and flatten it to get all your, you know, your burnishing uh, and, and also the sticking. But I want to just quickly show you to pop your bottom literally onto there. Take one of your panels. She's a little monkey, isn't she? She keeps telling me. Uh, you're going to pop that and glue that onto the bottom, and then we're going to stick those on. So while I'm doing that, I think we can go in and check in with Sean while I'm popping those bits, because I've just explained yeah. how you're going to do that. But stick those panels down, pop the bottom on, um, and then you're ready to go. So let's let's go and see awesome. how Sean's doing. Uh, so we're going to uh, go and have a look at the paper pad. Sean's still busy beavering away. Oh, we should uh, less, sir. Um, the card of the day is uh, Debbie's Craft Along will be the card of the day. Let me share with you then a couple of the paper pads that we have on a brilliant uh, winter sale pricing for you as well. So definitely uh, snap these up. Uh, we've got the farmhouse paper pad for you, available at 60% off which is an absolutely glorious deal, isn't it? One of our all-time favourite paper pads, this one. So do snap that one up. And then also the other one we've got here for you uh, is this one, which is the uh, garden party uh, paper pad that you can see right there. Absolutely beautiful designs, really lovely. Lots of floral, lots of lacy designs in there for you. So a very, very popular one uh, was that. £6.49, $9.97, uh, if you want to get your hands on that one. Right, Sean's ready. Let's cross to Sean. Uh, how's it going, Sean? Have you managed to get it all finished? Just need to do the lid. Oh, yeah. it looks amazing, Debbie, doesn't it? Honestly, beautiful. Oh, that's lovely, Sean. Well done. That's absolutely spot on. Yeah, it looks absolutely fabulous. Absolutely spot on. Absolutely uh, have fabulous. you enjoyed? Have you enjoyed taking part in the craft along, Sean? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Have you? What are you doing with the rest of your Saturday? Um, I'm going to see family actually after. Oh, cute. Well, yeah. I hope you have a few festive drinks and uh, I hope you have a brilliant Christmas and an amazing new year. Uh, and uh, thank you uh, for joining us. Will you come back and join us again sometime? Yes, definitely. Ah, oh, excellent. Well, have a great Christmas, Sean. Uh, lots and, and lots you. of love. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Oh, so lovely to have Sean on the show. Yeah. Cracking job. She did a brilliant Absolutely job. Absolutely cracking job. Brilliant job. Right, oh, what's the extra update? What's it? Oh, ho, 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 ho. three minutes, how did that happen? Oh my days, it's literally flown by. I tell you what, I'm just going to manage to get one of my bottoms in. So let's get that one on first. And then literally now, I've, um, I'm not going to worry too much about the inside panel because I would have done that before I put the other panels in there. But what you'll end up with, and when you put your box lid together as well, see so your box lid, Pop that together and then stick that on the top and you've got yourself a beautifully decorated box which just needs use your ribbon that we talked about and um, get your ribbons and let me just pull pull my ribbon off just for a second i'm going to pop the ribbon onto the top of my box like so and again maybe add a little another tag on there if you wanted to but how fabulous does the trifold aperture look when it's in a, and, and again it's got that lovely tunnel feature if I lift it up you can see they're absolutely beautiful and that is the way that you would create your box the only panel I forgot to pop in there was my bottom my bottom box however I'm not going to worry too much because it looks quite nice and like finished and whew, just in the nick of time Joe oh my days
oh my days just got it done um but please do share your lovely makes like sean's just done share your lovely makes because i can't wait to see what you've done have you used different papers have you used a different um have you used a different stamp set which one have you gone with um but a lovely way to create a beautiful gift box just with a little bit of dimension with that lovely aperture in there how gorgeous are they joe Really, really beautiful, Thank aren't they? A uh, really fantastic project, Debbie. Thank you so much. That is, of course, today's project of the day as well. Let me take you back through the collection that you're going to be able to get. Then remember, you can watch this back at any time. You've got Birthday Bunny. Uh, you mean so much. Uh, also in here, you'll get You Have My Heart, which is the one that Debbie used. Uh, you've been on my mind. Peeking in to say hello. And also, of course, Best Buddy there as well for you. Lots and lots of love from Gilmore uh, coming in as well. Says, great job, Sean. Great job, Debbie. Awesome project. Um... Debbie, I won't see you again now, then, but you will be back with us, won't you, on the 23rd, is that right, for the yep, last absolutely. day? Yeah, absolutely. The last live the day. The 23rd, yep, the 23rd of December, I shall be back up here for the last live day of shows. Uh, and I can't wait. Got another craft along as well. Brilliant. Yeah, can't wait to see you uh, for that. Don't forget, winter sale, 70% off selected lines over on the website. Go and check out that whole area of the website. Also remember, double points of 48 hours for this weekend up until the end of tomorrow. I'll see you back here for a Tony Tiffany takeover craft house. Uh, if not, then remember, a very special softer side tomorrow. It's Bernie's last show here at Crafters TV. Uh, so um, do come along, send a load of love. Uh, it's gonna be a really, really brilliant uh, show tomorrow. So one you definitely will not want to miss out on. Remember, you can watch this back any time you like don't forget to check out those baskets i'll see you back here in two hours time with the lovely tiffany bye bye